comes to NMN, which we've studied for a lot, um, and there are studies on NR in humans, and I, I have some insights into NMN in humans as well, though that work isn't yet published. Um, I, what can I reveal? I can reveal that the taking doses, uh, say less than 250 milligrams, don't have a big effect on NAD in the blood. Mm, that would make you, sense. You yeah. do have to take high doses, but it, it's complicated by the observation that <clears throat> a single dose won't have a big long-lasting effect anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. We see that in mice as well. You, you take one hit of uh, NMN and it'll go up, um, maybe go about 50%, and then it'll quickly die, die away in levels. But what's interesting in the mouse and the human studies is it's more like a, a positive stock market where over a period of, in the case of the NR study that I'm thinking of, after nine days, it was a, an accumulation uh, up to a certain level. And so if a study has only done a one time point in a human or in a mouse, uh, be careful because that's probably misleading. Um, and that you, know, you want to measure these things after at least nine days and hopefully after a few months. Where, and you know, maybe, Joe, that those low doses actually start to kick in. So what, what do I do? I, I take a bolus in the morning. I take a gram in the morning. I know a, a gram is likely to be raising my NAD levels during the day. I also try to time it with my natural circadian rhythm. So NAD will go up during the morning, getting ready. Um, but if I take it at night, uh, what I find is that I'm actually starting to interfere with my sleep patterns. Interesting. Yeah, and a lot of people have told me that that's the case as well, with resveratrol as well. It actually makes sense. There's a, a few science papers on this about um, CERT1, which is the target, one of the, the NAD requiring enzymes that we study. So CERT1 is also, its activity is cycling through the day with NAD, uh, turning on genes that are required for you know, morning activities and going to sleep at night, clearing the brain at night, we think. If you get those out of kilter, uh, I mean, it makes sense that you will not only affect your body's metabolism, find it hard to sleep, but you could even start to have the effects of jet lag uh, inadvertently. Um, I, I like to think that by taking the NAD boosters when I'm traveling, I'm actually resetting my body's clock. And I do find, you know, for me, uh, in my experience, I do feel better if I reset my clock with an NAD booster when I arrive at, at, in a new time zone. In mice, we do know that it's cycling uh, through the day. You know, the, let's see, we're, we're right on the cutting edge here. You know, you have a choice. You can take it at, at night or in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, probably what's happening is if, if I take it just before I go to bed, my body's not in a fasting state yet. It's still got... You know, my dinner is still in there. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's mimicking fasting. It's raising NAD levels just when it should, should be starting to, to tailor off. I think probably what's happening, Joe, is now that I'm thinking out loud, is towards the early morning, your NAD levels are going to start coming up because that's when your stomach's empty and you've absorbed a lot of the nutrients overnight. And as it's coming up towards, you know, waking up and uh, in the early morning, that's when I provide my boost.